Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of Blow the Whistle. We are back for the new semester live from Media City this afternoon. I'm Max Hayes. And I'm Amy Jessup. If you've just tuned in to Blow the Whistle for the first time ever, welcome. We look and discuss all the big sporting news from football to golf. We want to hear from you this semester, so get in touch on social media at blowthewhistle.uos and let us know your thoughts on the topics discussed. Good to see you, Evie. Did it's you have a good Christmas? I did, thank you. And you? Yeah, not bad, thanks. Um, hopefully, looking forward to blow the whistle throughout the rest of this semester and, and, uh, and some good sporting news to talk about. Hopefully, it'll be good throughout the new year as well. Yes, definitely. Right, let's kick things off then. Last week, Salford Red Devils visited our home here in Media City for their annual media day before the start of the new Super League season. Yes, and our good friend Sam Armitage popped downstairs to see what was happening. I am here at the media day for the Salford Red Devils ahead of the new Super League season that starts in around about a month's time. Uh, the Salford Red Devils were really close in last season's campaign, falling just short in the semi-finals of the playoffs against a very strong St Helens side. I'm going to try and get a word with a few of the players ahead of the new season. I'm here with Chris Atkin, the Salford Red Devils scrum half. How are you doing today on this media day? Yeah, good. Uh, just uh, got here, got some free some pictures, so yeah, it's been a good start. I am stood here with Callum Watkins, the Salford Red Devils captain here on the media day ahead of the new season. How are we doing today, mate? Yeah, really good, thanks. Sad. Yeah, I'm good, yeah, thank good. you. Um, are we looking forward to the new season? Yeah, exciting. Yeah, it's always exciting times going into a, a new year, new season, um, a different journey, uh, which is every year, so um, really looking forward to it. So last, last year you guys um, did really well, you got to the, uh, the semi-final of the playoffs. You, came up short in what was a very close game against uh, St Helens. How are you going to look to maybe replicate that next season? Yeah, I think for a lot of us it was, you know, maybe our first experience of playoff rugby and playing into, you know, that intensity and, you know, coming up against what was to go on to be the champion St Helens was a, was a tough game and it was it was playoff rugby. Do you take it upon yourself as the captain to be a bit more of an experienced head to guide a few of these guys who, you know, don't have as much experience in the uh, the postseason as yourself? Yeah, that's really important. I think for myself, I think it's just about helping people out, helping the guys out as much as possible, really, in them situations. Because you know we had a really good year last year, and I think we got to a point where we were really close to getting to the grand final. We we're one one game off that, and a lot of the times you you, you learn a lot from when you lose them game, them type of games, and you you learn as a learn as a player and as a person as well. So I think that's really important for for especially the rest of the squad to know that they can get to that position. Is next season's goal maybe to what to do one better, or is it a case of maybe reassessing your expectations and you know taking it one game at a time? No, I don't think so. I think for us, it's about it is about winning. You know, for me, it's, it, is, it is about winning. I think a lot of the boys will say the same thing. Um, we know where we can get to. We know what we can achieve. So. We've all got to buy into that situation. You know, we try not to spend too much time looking at what other people maybe say from outside of the group. But we, in, you know, in the group know, you know, how disappointed we were with last season. But um, also the positives to, to get as far as we did from, you know, maybe it wasn't the best start of the season. So you know, we've kind of learnt a lot from that, as I've said. But you know, I think we're really, really excited to, you know, what could be a, a good year for Salford and the, the town. It's a journey. It's a long journey, but uh, it's all worth it when you get to the big games or you lift a trophy at the end so that, that's good that's good sights and goals to go for, for for this club especially yeah it's good it's good to have goals thank you good luck for the season cheers mate thanks no thank you and uh, good luck for the for the new year cheers so the players have a little bit of hope a little bit of promise heading into the new season the 150th season for the Salford Red Devils here's hoping that they can carry on their momentum from last year and maybe win a bit of silverware at the end of the season back to you guys in the studio Sam with the exclusive there, and he joins us on the sofa right yeah, now. Good friend, Sam Armitage, I exactly. think it was. Yeah. Good friend pops downstairs. <laughs> and Sam, great to see the Red Devils at Media City for that open day. How do you think this season's going to go for them? Because you mentioned just to them, is it that case of going one better? I mean, in your personal opinion, how can you see it kind of playing out? Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on them, really. It's their 150th season, you know, it's a very... A very old club when it comes to uh, when it comes to rugby league and a club that has been starved from really much su much success mm -hmm. up until a few years ago I mean you know runners up in the Challenge Cup in 2020 um, and like I said last season coming up very close to eventual uh, uh, grand final winners mm -hmm. St Helens 
in what was probably what many Salford Red Devils fans would say a bit of a controversial one. You know, there was a bit about a penalty try um, at the end that, you know, maybe St. Ellen should have got a, a man sent off and that may have uh, switched the tide, which may have put them in a position to get to the grand final. Ultimately, wasn't to be. St. Ellen's are a very strong side, though, so it's nothing to really turn your nose apart. A, uh, a, se a semi-final in the um, in the playoffs, losing to the eventual winners. You know, St Helens have had a stranglehold on the league for a very long time. They came close to knocking them out. So last season, very uh, something to really build on. You could say, could also be a case of, you know, do they have an added extra bit of expectation that they're going to be able to live up to? Who knows? And yeah. um, just quickly, Sam. How was it them having their media day here in Media City? Well, yeah, it's actually it's actually quite funny how I managed to stumble on it. You know, I wasn't really coming down here knowing that their media day was uh, was going on. I just had a regular old uh, regular old broadcast workshop. Um, so I mean, luckily enough, uh, luckily enough, Andrew Fletcher allowed me to uh, to to come down and um, uh, interview mm -hmm. a few of the players. I mean, it was it was a it was a bit surreal because you know I wasn't really expecting um, anything anything really to come of it um, you know there was people from the BBC yeah. there you know quite a few you know yeah. big radio companies yeah, there. definitely some no lovely thank you very much yeah. right thank you for having it's been nice so yes. so from rugby to football then it's been another mad busy weekend and a week of Premier League fixtures Arsenal v Man United what a game that was on Sunday yeah. Also, breaking news yesterday with Frank Lampard being sacked as Everton manager. Yes, our reporter Dan Caddick has the latest over at the TV. Thanks, Avi and Max. Well, as you mentioned, yesterday saw Everton's dismissal of Frank Lampard following a ninth defeat away at West Ham. His former side lie bottom of the table after 20 games. Speculation has been floating for quite some time now as the decision comes as expected. Everton's board has thanked Lampard after his help with avoiding relegation last season. Everton have begun the process of finding a new manager. Replacements remain in the public eye with former Leeds man Marcelo Bielsa being rumoured after his spell out of football. The most probable outcome, however, points at Sean Dyche, former Burnley manager. The weekend in the Premier League is now wrapped up and now all eyes are set on the FA Cup action this weekend. This season has been seeing some of the most surprising results to date. Chelsea and Liverpool continue to struggle, whilst Arsenal is at the top of the table with a comfortable point difference. Only one of Manchester's clubs saw success over the weekend, with Manchester City securing a f comfortable three points over relegation candidates Wolverhampton Wanderers, thanks to yet another Erling Haaland showcase. Haaland securing three goals and increasing his goal tally for the season to 25 in the Premier League alone. Despite being expected as a close, in close conversation, Liverpool's Darwin Nunes has struggled since the beginning of the season with only five goals so far in this campaign. The Red Devils' Manchester United travels aw travelled away to London this past Sunday playing title challengers Arsenal in a thrilling affair. Arsenal's Eddie Nketiah snuck one in at the di dying embers of the game to send the away United fans back to Manchester with imminent effect. Chelsea's new name, Mudric, proved his ability in a pacey display, but was unable to put one over Liverpool in a goalless draw. The draw is bound to leave Liverpool and Chelsea in a cloud of worry as they both struggle to climb up into the top six. The FA Cup is bound to cause plenty of upsets this weekend, as it always does. Highlight games include Manchester United versus Reading, Brighton versus Liverpool, and Friday night's headliner, Manchester City versus Arsenal. As always, young players are heavily relied on in these games, so expect some standout performances from players seeing to make a difference. It is all very exciting and we are certainly in for a blockbuster weekend. I'll be back next week covering all these results and giving you the lowdown. I've been Daniel Caddick, back to you, Evie and Max. Dan, thank you very much. We'll see more of you throughout the semester, fingers crossed, as our football reporter. Well then, the Australian Open round of 16 takes place this week. Andy Murray was knocked out at the weekend despite his fantastic efforts whilst playing with a metal hip. Murray said he felt like he gave everything, especially after a sensational comeback in the second round.
Morris in Melbourne. It, uh, how do I feel right now? Um, yeah, I mean, lots of yeah mixed emotions. I mean, I feel like I gave everything that I had to this event. Um, so I'm proud of that, and that is really in whatever you're doing that's all you can do you can't always control like you can't always control the outcome you can't control how well you're going to play or you know the result um but you know you can control um the the, the effort that you put into it and i gave everything that i had the last the last three matches so i'm very you know i'm very proud of of that Playing with a metal hit, very interesting. Evie, let's go back to what Dan was talking about then. Everton, especially sacking Lampard yesterday. Do you think it was the right decision? Because there's been so much pressure on Everton. They're sat in the relegation zone. You know, they haven't won in eight games, and you know they're getting dragged into it more as the season goes on. But the club's broken really from top to bottom. A lot of Everton fans. But do you think it was the right decision to get rid of him? I do believe it was. Obviously, like you said, there's been 12 games. They've mm. they've lost the majority mm. of them. But then also, I guess for Everton, I don't know the correct numbers mm. so this might but I swear this is their like fifth the manager sixth manager sixth in six manager, years and that's a lot to go through mm. for the club for the players for the fans yeah. and what do you think about that yeah I mean it's an interesting one because Lampard's been at a few clubs you know he's been at Derby before he went to of course yeah. to Chelsea you could argue that maybe he probably should have had longer at Chelsea but then you could also argue that he probably wasn't up to standard um, a lot of people do say he felt lucky with you know being at Derby he had a lot of the Chelsea youngsters that he was able to bring through Mason Mount you know one of those to mention and then he comes to Everton and it's a slightly different project the club's you know kind of broken from top to bottom a lot of Everton fans have said you know we, we just mentioned their sixth manager in six years they've got no real plan so it's hard for mm. Lampard to come in you know he hit his one year anniversary and then a day after he's sacked so that says that says everything you need to know really there isn't a massive plan it just depends who they get in Dan obviously mentioned there Sean Dyche being the possible candidate yeah. Sean Dyche probably is the best man to to stabilize Everton and, and certainly try and keep them in the league but there's teams that are, are really found form at the moment obviously my team Forest have you know they're kind of you know thriving at the moment going up the table whereas Everton and, and, and kind of other teams are getting dragged in yeah by well the day. speaking of Forest mm. aren't they they've got a big game tomorrow yeah night. big game tomorrow <laughs> semi-final semi -final Carabao Cup First leg at the city ground. I'm going. I'm rushing back yeah. from, from from here in Media City to get back to the city ground. So yeah, um, very much looking forward to it. And then week after, it's obviously the reverse fixture at Old Trafford. And um, yeah, it, I mean, look, Forrester, of course, the underdogs. But fingers crossed. And uh, we'll have a bit of a um, we'll have a bit of a we'll have a bit of a special episode on uh, on Man United Forest yeah. next week fingers crossed well speaking about tomorrow's night's yeah. game are you nervous as a forest fan yeah. what do you think the score is going to be what's oh, the outcome um i think because it's at the city ground the atmosphere a lot of people say it is like a fortress and it certainly is there is so much noise in that place it almost puts the teams off coming you know they'd massively fear forest so i think it'll probably be I think it will be tight, but I think Forrest could actually edge it tomorrow 1 2 0. It just depends next week when we go back to Old Trafford. You know, Old Trafford have a, a very positive home crowd. The Glazers are on the way out. They've got a good manager in Eric Tan Hag now. It now depends whether, because they've got the atmosphere on their side, they will probably, you know, it'll probably be 2 3 0 maybe. So, but, you know, you never know. It's. It's it's cup final, so you just never know what can happen. Yeah. Unpredictable, you know, isn't it? Yeah, fingers crossed, and we'll have more on that next week. And uh, as well as that, we'll have a few more different presenters in the studio. Sam will be joining us in the studio. I might be out and about doing a few different bits and bobs this year and a few lives maybe outside some football clubs. So uh, we look forward to that, Evie. Don't miss me too much <laughs> if you have another presenter. I'll next try. Year. I'll try not <laughs> to anyway. So that's all we've got time for on this first episode back but we'll be back next week. Yes, remember to follow us across social media on blowthewhistle.us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.